Coral reefs are amongst the most diverse and biologically complex ecosystems on Earth. Life on a tropical reef is a constant battle for space, food and survival. It is no surprise that these conditions have led to some creatures developing some extraordinary relationships. Several examples of symbiotic relationships can be seen on coral reefs, such as the partnership between a goby and a shrimp, in which the virtually blind shrimp shares its burrow in return for the guard duties provided by the goby. Another example are the cleaning stations. Cleaner shrimp and wrasse will work tirelessly to clean their customers, removing small parasites which can cause harm, and by doing so they are guaranteed a free meal and are safe from the threat of predation. An anemone fish. A small defenseless fish which has developed an extraordinary relationship with sea anemones. Each tentacle of an anemone contains powerful stinging cells capable of paralyzing and killing a fish. In order to live safely within its home, a fish must carefully make contact with the anemone's tentacles over a period of several hours or days, until it forms a layer of mucus which prevents stinging cells from firing upon contact. It is this unique skill which enables these fish to live free from harm within the tentacles of its host. By doing so, the fish is acquiring the anemone's deadly defense to use as its own, and has also inherited a safe stronghold in which to live and breed. These territorial fish also provide a level of protection to the anemone, and will work hard to defend their home from potential threats such as butterfly fish, a known predator of anemones and capable of striking in vast numbers. Some other species have been known to seek shelter within the safety of anemones. Damselfish are also found near anemones and these uninvited guests will be promptly removed. A more welcome visitor is the anemone shrimp which will live harmoniously within the anemone and provide its cleaning services to the anemone whilst also sharing its food. Anemone fish live in pairs or small groups. The largest of the fish is female and she alone is in charge. Second to her is the dominant male, the second largest fish of the group and the only mature male which will fertilize her eggs. It is these two which will dominate and bully the rest of the community, all of which are juvenile males, eagerly waiting for their chance to move up the hierarchy. Anemone fish are born hermaphrodites, and everyone is born male, and will remain male unless the position of dominant female becomes available in which case the most mature male will change sex and assume the role whilst the rest of the fish move up in status according to size, with the largest juvenile male becoming the new mature male. The mature male will have to work hard to prove his worth and maintain his high position, and if he does not, he will be replaced. One way for a dominant male to maintain his position in the anemone is to ensure the safety and protection of its young. It is the mature male who will prepare a suitable surface for the eggs, close enough to the anemone so that its tentacles provide protection. The female will then lay between a hundred to a thousand eggs, which are securely fastened to the rock surface and fertilized by the mature male and for the next six to ten days they will be tirelessly tended to and guarded by him under the watchful eye of his mate. With this many offspring an anemone can soon become crowded. Once the juveniles are old enough they will be chased out by the female 
As far as she is concerned, this is her anemone, and everyone else is replaceable. The juveniles must now find a new anemone in which they can establish a hierarchy of their own and begin a new cycle of life in an anemone.